hello, my Hemi gouache has finally arrived. I ended up getting the bigger set that comes with the brushes, but it just so happened that I had a regular size on hand so I could show the difference. The 24 set is quite a lot larger because it also comes with a place to hold your brushes, except not all of them fit in there, so I find it a bit useless. I think it would have been just better to make it smaller so that it takes up less room on your workspace, but oh well. I couldn't actually open the 18 piece set as it was a gift for a friend, so I just turned them both upside down. All the colors in the small set looked like they were included in the bigger one, and then we had some extras of course. The big difference is the whites. There's only one in the 24 set, which could be a problem if you're working a lot with pastels or you like your colors really opaque, or maybe you do a lot of highlights. They do sell the bigger individual tubs online, you can easily find them on sites like Aliexpress. So I think I'm probably going to go ahead and order one just so I'm not constantly aware of how much white I'm using. I have watched so many videos on these paints and so I'm so excited to be joining the hype. You get so much paint for the price point, this whole palette is so heavy, it's amazing. From everything that I've read, they are meant to be cheap, student grade paints. But I'm in Canada, so these aren't actually as affordable as in other places like the States. However, I bought this whole thing, plus the brushes, for something around $55, so it's not too bad. Just like so many other people have already shown, taking off the labels turns into a mess no matter what you do. I totally thought that I was just better than everybody else and I could make do with no mess, um, but... <laughs> It turns out I'm definitely not better than anybody else. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You just can't get into it because they would never understand. Anyway, the glue is so stubborn on some of them and there isn't much to grip on in the first place. I guess I'll just consider it as part of the mandatory experience of using these paints. My cheap ass also could not get over how much paint remains on the lids. It felt like so much waste, so I made the friend that I was painting with at the time use up that paint first. Um, I'm so sorry, Zaya. <laughs> Love you. Before I start painting with them um, and giving my two cents, I just want to make clear that I have never used gouache before, so this is all the opinion of a newbie who's watched too many of these videos already, but has no actual experience. While we're at it, I just also want to mention that I'm new to making videos, so please leave some constructive criticism below if you can. Let me know if maybe the music is too loud, uh, or the intro felt unnecessary, or maybe I'm talking too fast. For this piece, I'm using cotton bee paper, which is usually what I use for my watercolors, so it should do okay with everything that I'm about to throw at it. Using these paints really made me reflect on the type of medium I prefer. People often say that it's kind of a mix between acrylic and watercolor, and I can understand why. Watering them down, you can use them like watercolor, and leaving them thicker, you can get a more opaque coverage and some texture, provided that your paints aren't prone to cracking. I've learned that it's an issue with gouache where if you put too many thick layers it can crack when they dry. This wasn't really an issue with what I painted on this day and I haven't come across this problem yet but duly noted. This reaffirmed my feelings of hate towards acrylic painting as I found myself trying to use them a lot more like watercolors. I really hate that feeling of dry canvas or paper and thick paint that's trying to go on it. But I didn't just want to use them like watercolors because they aren't. Basically what I'm trying to say is that if you want the actual gouache experience, it requires you getting the mixture of water to paint right and having it consistent. And that's not something that I was able to do on the first try. It's still not something that I'm able to do every time. It's definitely tricky for sure. You can see that I was randomly using both thick and thin layers of paint and that wasn't in artistic intent, I was just struggling. But I think that the paint ended up being quite forgiving. Something to note about gouache, unlike acrylic and watercolor, is that you can actually lift the dry paint off of an already dried layer. But I found that the Hemi paints dried pretty fast and didn't really lift too much unless you used a very watered down layer on top. That can either be a good or a bad thing depending on how you work with them. If you mainly use acrylics, this probably won't be that surprising to you, 
but for me it was really nice to be able to use the deductive approach to applying highlights or just painting in general when I was using gouache because in watercolor normally you have to plan ahead to where your light areas will be and you usually always have to go from a light shade into darker shades so it was really nice to be able to not have to think about that because sometimes it really hurts your brain and it feels like a chore before you start your painting where you really have to consider where everything is going to go and you can't just figure it out as you go. Let me just veer off topic here for a second to say how much work it is to make these voiceovers. I do not know how art YouTubers do it. It's taken me about half a day just to plan and write down and record what to say up until this point in the video right now. And even filming this was really difficult, especially because I don't have proper equipment. I have this really old tripod that I have sort of adjusted to make overhead shots for my paintings. And because of how much it leans forward and how heavy the camera is, you need to make sure that the third leg behind is weighted down so that the whole thing doesn't fall on top of you. I don't have any sort of weight or any sort of rig for that, so I was just using a box of cat food, canned cat food, and eventually the whole thing ended up coming down on me, and thankfully I have uh, footage of that, so for your viewing pleasure, I have included it. <laughs> Please enjoy. Oh! <laughs> it hit me right in the bunk! <laughs> It just said bonk. Yeah, I'm okay. Honestly, good thing my head was there. I can honestly say I had no idea what I was doing throughout the whole process, as I often don't when I paint, but it was a really nice change from using watercolor since you can control blending and movement of the paint in ways that you usually can't with watercolors. Although pretty vibrant, the colors themselves are not as opaque as you'd think, so you definitely need to mix them with white in order to get that full coverage. I've used the paints on a few more paintings since I painted this and my one white is going very fast so I can understand why the regular um, set has two. I did see a review on Instagram of someone saying that the paints are quite streaky even if you mix them with white. So if you're trying to cover an area flat with just one color, it doesn't look as nice as perhaps using other types of gouaches. And although I can't speak to that, I can say that I think I can see what they mean. In this painting, you can see what I mean when I'm using the white on top of darker areas. It looks quite streaky, and although it might seem that it's because of the brush stroke or maybe the consistency of the paint that I mixed wrong, it is also because of just the way that the paint is itself. It also has a little bit of a chalky feel, um, which you can notice especially when it dries, but they are student grade paints, so you know, that's nothing that really deters me from using them. Unless it ends up being a better deal, you really have no business buying this bigger set as opposed to the regular 16 piece or sorry 18 piece set. The extra colors are nice, but you can just mix them yourself. So unless you think that you're going to be using them very often, it's really just not worth it. I do not have a really big working area, so the space, the amount of space that they take up is honestly obnoxious, but I really can't seem to control myself when it comes to art supplies. So I just convinced myself that the bigger set was the better deal. <laughs> I should probably mention something about the brushes that it comes with as well. They're pretty cute. That's it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They're really good for gouache, I think. They're not great quality, so I've tried to use them with watercolors and they don't retain that much water, but they work just fine for gouache. I like the variety that they come in. I was pretty low on brushes before this, so they've actually come in handy. 
especially for using uh, as drumsticks. <laughs> I made a mistake and didn't focus this part properly, so I ended up just speeding it up and making a time lapse. Sorry, still learning. I'll be back in a bit with final thoughts. Well done, this is how the final piece turned out. Um, it looks pretty good, I like it. I can see that some of the paint ended up pooling on the sides and that's really my fault because I didn't pre-stretch the paper and so I ended up warping and then the paint's kind of, you know, anyways. As you can see, the paper didn't really end up very straight and that again is my fault. I could have prevented that by stretching ahead of time. But considering the amount of work and the amount of playing around that I did, it's actually not that bad. It's about as much as it would work if I used watercolors on there. So that's good to know for the future. One last thing that I just wanted to mention that I haven't seen covered in a lot of other videos is that there's actually a pretty considerable gap between the lid and the body of the palette. So I'm not really sure what that means for how fast or slow the paints dry, but I'm guessing it's not a good thing. My palette specifically also came damaged on one side, so the clasp on one side won't fully close because it is um, ripped. And so, yeah, I'm not sure how long these are going to stay wet. I've heard that you can put them in the fridge if you want them to stay this consistency for longer, but I don't have room to do that. So um, I guess I'll just update in a different video when they dry. <laughs> Overall, they were really fun to use. I would recommend, especially if you have a low budget, because like I said, you can water them down and use them like watercolor, but you can also use them thicker. Um, and you also get to explore gouache. So yeah, go ahead and get it. And I have a little clip at the end here of um, when me and my friend are actually painting this live. Bye. So let's see yours. Oh my gosh, Chew, he's so cute. <laughs> and this is mine. Thank you. And this is the reference. This is the reference photo. I think it turned out alright.